On April 18, 1980, a woman's body was found on the shore of the North Canadian River in eastern Oklahoma County. Whoever took her life dropped quicklime over her body in an attempt to quicken the decomposition process. Strangely enough, it actually had an opposite effect and preserved her body. The police were able to determine as she was shot three times. The woman had a professionally done heart-shaped tattoo above her left breast. She had blonde to light brown hair extending to her shoulders. The investigators also noted that she had extensive dental work done and hoped this would help to identify her later. It would be tough to identify her because the woman had no form of identification on her. She soon became known as the Lime Lady because of the quick lime that was poured over her. Captain Bob Green started working on the case. He said investigators theorized that the Lime Lady was between 18 and 25 years old. He also said that his team exhausted all resources to identify the woman, but to no avail. The case unfortunately went cold. In 2018, however, Bob Green decided to renew their search for answers. He contacted a DNA Doe project in September of 2018. Bob Green collected the Lime Lady's DNA samples from the Oklahoma State Borough of Investigation. He then sent it into the DNA Doe project. During the nine months they waited for a profile to be created with the DNA samples, his team learned that a Lime Lady at one point lived in Las Vegas, Nevada and served in the army. They then used the local medical examiner to secure military records such as dental records. Thanks to these records, they could identify the Lime Lady as 21-year-old Tamara Lee Tigrad on the 30th of January 2020. It is a good thing they had the dental records because Tamara had no living relatives. Tamara was born April 18, 1959 in California. This meant that her body was found on a day she turned to new one. She later moved to Las Vegas, Nevada. Tamara was a veteran of the United States Army. Her parents passed away in the 2000s and her sister in 2010. This sadly meant that they never found out what happened to their loved one. In March 1980, a month before her body would be found, Tamara went for a walk near her home in Las Vegas and never returned home. She was reported missing. It was never followed up on though since a woman in Ohio was using her identity. The woman was never named a suspect and her true identity is unknown. It is good that Tamara's identity is now known at least. The police is still actively trying to determine who took her life. Captain Bob Green had this to say. I always just wanted to bring dignity to the victim in this case. All of these years, she has been gone without a trace, with none of her family or acquaintances knowing what happened to her. The disappearance of Madeline McCann is probably one of the most well-known cold cases out there, so I'm not going through all of the details again. I have made a video covering this case before, so I'll just add the link to it in the description. What I am going to do though is discuss the updates and new findings that happened this year. It has been 13 years since Madeline went missing and it honestly seemed hopeless that this case would ever get solved. Then on June 3rd, 2020, German and British investigators dropped a bombshell. Just like that, the case was back in the spotlight. They announced that a German man was under investigation on suspicion that he took the life of Madeline. They attempted to hide the man's identity initially, but it did not stay a secret for long. The suspect was named in German press reports as Christian B., a 43-year-old man. He lived in Portugal in the Algarve region from 1995 to 2007. Christian B. is currently serving a sentence for unrelated crimes in Germany. More information soon came out. They showed the two vehicles he used at the time of her disappearance. First, a Volkswagen camper van and a Jaguar sedan. They asked anyone with information to come forward. Sadly, the German police also announced that the evidence they have leads them to believe that Madeline is no longer alive. 
The police in Britain, however, is still referring to it as a missing persons case. Her family still has hope that she is alive. It was also made public that on the night of Madeline's disappearance, Christian B's cell phone pinged very close to where Madeline was that evening. The next day, Christian B transferred the registration of his Jaguar sedan into someone else's name. It could just be a coincidence, but it is important to note other way. Using Christian B's cell phone, they were able to see that he received a call an hour before she disappeared. The call lasted for half an hour. Here you can see his phone number and also the number had called him. The police first started looking into Christian B because they saw him inquiring about Madeline's disappearance in a chat room. While living in the Algarve, Christian B made his living by stealing. The German police theorized that maybe he broke into the apartment where Madeline was to steal something and then decided to abduct her. A question a lot of people will have is why did it take 13 years for this information to come out? Christian B was actually looked into by the Portuguese police back in 2008 because of his bad track record, but he was cleared. Then in 2017, on a 10 year anniversary of Madeline's disappearance, Christian B was again looked into. He apparently talked to someone in a bar about how he ended the life of Madeline and buried her somewhere. That witness then told police. Christian B also talked about his involvement in another offense and he was actually convicted for that crime and that is why he's currently in prison. It was then revealed that the suspect's full name is Christian Breckner. He left the Algarve area in 2007 and moved to Hanover, Germany. He lived off grid in a shed. The police recently searched the property and actually found a secret cellar. What's inside the cellar we don't know yet, as it happened just a few days ago and the police are not making all of the information public yet. We do know though that some samples were taken in for analysis. A man by the name of Wolfgang Cossack, who was the neighbor of Christian for a little while, remember that Christian told him that no one knew he was living there and he had not registered with the authorities. Wolfgang also remembered the camper van that Christian had parked next to his allotment. From 2013 to 2016, Christian lived in Braunschweig, about 40 miles from Hanover. There, neighbors of his claims, he also dug a cellar. These neighbors and the current owner wants it to be searched. The current owner fears that she might be sleeping on top of Madeline McGann. Christian has refused to talk to the police and his lawyer said that he will never tell them anything. German prosecutors are certain that this is their man however and that they will find a way to find him guilty of his crime. The Portuguese media claims that Christian had a female partner in crime that helped him to find the best properties to break into, but no real information was given and it is not confirmed yet. The police believes he lived in this house when he was living in Praia de Luge, close to where Madeline was taken from. Of course, all of this information coming out now is very recent and was not easy to compile, so it might seem a little all over the place. A lot of effort was put in though to make sure all of it is factually accurate. If any more information comes out or if I missed anything, I'll add links to the articles in a pinned comment so that everyone can stay up to date with the case.